I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life even upon the spirit of men. I declare that after now, oh God, we will walk according to your plan, purpose for our lives. I declare that destiny shall be fulfilled. Uh, in Jesus' name we have prayed. Uh, amen. Can I have a believing amen? Amen. amen? amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. By the way, you guys look very good. You guys look very good today. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, you look good. You look good. You look good. It look good. Some people, somebody told me during the course of this week that I should please help them warn the ministers to stop looking good. That um, they are becoming competitions. They are not letting the ladies see them. So I want to employ them. I'm using this exalted puppy to beg you, those of you who are not married, that you should help them. He says you should reduce your vibes. Reduce your vibes. Reduce your spirituality for them if you can. But that's not possible. That's just a joke. So when love happens, one of the things you must know and understand about life is that life is full of processes. Certain things happen in life that are planned for. For instance, when you give birth to a child after nine months, that's planned for. Life gives you nine months notice. If you pay your house rent today, life gave you another 12-month notice for another due date. So basically, you don't really help people like that. <laughs> Uh, when you want to get married, you already notice, you gave yourself notice. So at certain times, certain processes in life gives you notice. You are informed. But certain things in life are not planned for. One of the exciting things about life is the unpredictability of life. The fact that it's not just predictable. Life can rapidly change for the better or for the worse for anyone. So today you are in Nigeria, you can just next week you are in, you are in the U.S. Or we we'll call it in the U.S. <laughs> so what has happened? You have changed. It does not look like it before then, but it has happened. Life can happen so fast. And people sometimes even find love so fast. I mean, so I, I've spoken to some ladies. That they, they, I never know. You will favor me this way. Favor me this way. What has happened? Some months ago, they were praying. Right now, love has happened to them. So why did it happen and how did it happen so fast? They cannot tell. Why? Because love does not happen in processes. Love does not give you due dates. Love just come upon you because it is time for it. Scripture told us in the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse 8, the Bible says there is a time to love and a time to hate. When you enter into that season of love, love happens to you. Another scripture that will help you through 11 of Exodus, the scripture told us uh, that it makes all things beautiful in its time. Therefore, you can fall in love and get heartbroken when it is not your time for love yet. Do you understand that? All right. I love the song the music crew called The Door sang. The, the song says, like, love eyes. I'll just tell you the lyrics because I, if I sing it, the service will end. Praise God. It says, love eyes in the strangest places. Love eyes in familiar faces. Love comes when you least expect it. Love eyes in narrow corners. Love comes to those who seek it. Love eyes inside the rainbow. Love eyes inside molecular structures. Love is the answer. Remember the story of Boaz and Ruth. You know, Ru Boaz was not expecting to find love. Boaz was just a businessman doing his everyday business. And then he slept. And then somebody was at his feet. At his feet like that. He said, open, cover your servant. It was not what he planned for. Love just happened to him. Do you understand that? Isaac was in a place of his meditation. And behold... Rebecca comment. Many of us will also find the Rebekahs, not because we are searching, but we just sit. And many people will be found, not because they were looking, but because that time for it had come. Can I have an amen? amen? Is there anyone here who has ever been in love? Is there anyone here who has ever been in a loving relationship? Today I want to give you counsel that when love happens, it's not the time to begin to sleep around. When love happens, it's not the time to begin to do certain things. When love happens, what do I do? When I find love in the strangest places, when love happens to me, what do I do? Do you be like one of my friends who is still the legend in this place? Last year, we asked him, when you fell in love, what happened? He said, I won um, a scholarship prize of 50,000 naira, and I used the 50,000 naira to call a lady. Yes, Mumu get level. <laughs> so what happened? He found love, but he did not know how to respond. So his response was giving MTM money every night. 
And some of you that are smiling now, some guys have been calling you. If you calculate how much they have spent, it's more than that 50 kilo. You see, you are not smiling again now. <laughs> so what happens? Love happens to them. If there's one thing I'm sure of, is that at a certain time and in some place in our life journey, God has a place and has planned a love happen moment for every one of us. At a certain place, at a certain time in our journey, God has a love happen moment for us. My advice, therefore, is for you to wait for that love happen moment. Why? Because it's surely going to happen. So I want to quickly just advise you today. I, I'm not here to preach any serious message. I, we have better things to do. Abby? You said yes, sir. Ah. What's better than the word of God? You will hear this one. <laughs> that was just like a plot. I just put that in front to see those who will jump at it. You will hear this one today. I've got counsel and advice for you. When love happens, what do I do? Do I just begin to just blush? <laughs> no. Or should I make calls? Or should I go and pack to his house? Because I've seen people do that. What do you do? What is my advice? I call it my 12 cents relationship advice for you. My 12 cents. So it's 12 relationship advice. I'll give you 12. Ah, 12 cents, 1%. But if you don't understand, they just say my 12 couple relationship advice for you in case you're a Nigerian. It's my 12 couple advice for you. When love happens to you, the first three advices I want to give are advices that you need to use before love happens. The first three. So I'll give you three, first three, before love happens, and then the next nine will be, what do you do when love already happened to you? Praise God. Do you get that? Number one, fix your life first. That's my first advice to anyone. Fix your life first. No super sweet lady or superman is coming to fix your life. Hello, news break. No super sweet guy, no prayer warrior is coming to fix your life. You got to fix that life. If it's broken, sit down and mend it. Learn to fix your life. Be on top of your game. Marital relationship is for two old persons. Scripture says two shall become one, not half shall become one. Halves don't become one. So if you are not old in yourself, it is time to fix yourself and make yourself old. You need to understand that. Find your wholeness because your life depends on it. Find your wholeness. That's the first advice. No one is supposed to complete you. You should be complete in you. Do you understand that? Hey, I'm looking for that man. I'm looking for that lady who will just come and complete me. Hello? I didn't know you were an apostrophe. You should be a full stop, a full sentence. Hello? Find your full expression. Don't look for a man who will give you an expression. Because if you do, you are going to enter slavery. Hello? If you don't understand what you want in life, you are going to enter trouble. So what am I saying? Fix your business. Fix your career. Fix your life. Fix your past. Fix your emotion. A car that runs is more enticing than a car that is broken down. Hello? Have you ever wanted to buy a car before and somebody takes you to a car and says, ah, this car is good. A Toyota car is Nigerian. You just buy it. You feel like buying it because it runs. You just test it and then you drive it. And it's awesome. But then you went and they said, I want to buy a Camry. And then you enter the car. And they say, no, no, it can't start. It can't start. They say, what's wrong? They say, it's not fun, Beto. <laughs> Would you buy that kind of a car? No. Why? Because you can't trust them. Many people's lives are broken down. And that's the way it is. If you fix your life, it will become more enticing. More people will come. Stop crying and say, hey, it's the way I, left, I lived my life in the past. You have lived that life. Let that life be in the past. What are you going to do today? Many people are not having fun. Hello? You are never going to be this young anymore. I don't care how old you are. Enjoy your life. Number two, love yourself. There is nothing like self-love. Those who don't love themselves end up overly dependent on their partners for value and happiness. Ah, what do you think about my clothes? Ah, you have not called me today. Ah, yeah. Why? Because he do, she does not love herself. She doesn't value herself. So she needs somebody to always be giving her the right words. Hello? Hello? Don't worry, I'm not here to burst your bubble. I'm just here to teach you. So please relate with me. We're talking love and not spirit things. Amen. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 19, 19, 22, 39 of the book of Matthew, Jesus repeated the same thing. He said, love your neighbor as what? As yourself. 
Meaning that you cannot love your neighbor more than you love yourself. The mark that I will love my neighbor, the mark is set by the love I have for myself. If you say, you don't love me, you don't love me, I ask you, do I love me? So before you, you can't give what you don't have. So before you can show love to others, you first of all must be that love. And that's what God showed us. By first of all giving unto us the seed of love, Romans chapter 5 verse 5. So that when that seed is there in you, shed abroad in your heart, from that seed you can now begin to reveal the love of God to others. But you cannot give what you don't have. Listen to this, we all are materials and products of love. Amen. We are products of love. Nobody here came down from heaven. Amen. Prophet only prophesied of one person and the person has come. That's Jesus. Listen, life is like being in a plane and then the oxygen fails. You take the oxygen mask. Before you save others, you save yourself first. Before you find love, love yourself first. Give yourself a treat. You walk like a jackal. You walk like a donkey. Give yourself a treat. Spend the little of that money. What is life? But that man should enjoy himself. You can't buy KFC, you can't buy chicken in the world. You are waiting for a man to come and buy it. And you open your mouth and eat it. I've been worked for 30 days. You should be able to afford ice cream. Somebody said, but the money is not enough. It won't be enough. Enjoy it. Love yourself. Buy clothes for yourself. Enjoy yourself. Just look at yourself in the mirror and say, my God. I look at my wife this morning and I say, ah, ah. Don't you think God love you by giving you such an awesome guy like this? <laughs> Self-love. Overlove, they worry me for myself. I'm telling you. People like, I can't be depressed. I'm telling you, depressed. Where has he come from? Happiness is not you. I am a source of happiness. I said, ah, ah. <laughs> and I'm going. I'm telling you. You must have that self-love for yourself. It is what you have that you can give. Many of us are looking for somebody to come love us so that we can know we are valuable. Like I used to say when I was in school, somebody told you you are fine and then you are happy. Are you okay? Don't you have mirror? If you don't have mirror, you don't have blue verse that can reflect. <laughs> when someone says you are fine, say yes, thank you. You are not saying what I don't know, but I won't say I know so that you won't say I am proud. I but it's, it's something I know. Love yourself first. Self-love is the first love. Tell your neighbor, self-love is the first love. Number three, stop waiting and live your life. These are the first three advice. Stop waiting and live your life. Stop waiting for Romeo. Stop waiting for Juliet. Stop that nonsense. Live your life. Enjoy. <laughs> so I told someone, I said, I'm having fun with Jesus. I'm having fun. Enjoy your life. Don't wait. Before I was in a relationship, I was having fun. Those who know me, they knew. I did, there's nothing. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for. I, I, so before somebody say I can't buy a car, who will marry me? Nonsense. Buy the car. Put it on the road. If the idiot cannot marry me, another one will come. Enjoy yourself. Stop waiting. Live your life. Live your life. I feel like traveling. Travel. 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 Go to Dubai, go to Ghana, travel. If you don't have money, go to Lome. Travel, enjoy your life. Take a break. Go to Joss, not because a girl is there. Go because it's no. Listen to this. Love happens faster for those whose lives are in motion. Do something with your life. Love happens faster for those whose lives are in motion. Don't stop. Keep moving. Maduro, keep moving. Be on the express road. Keep moving. Bera, move. Don't get angry consistently and constantly looking at the rear mirror or at the calendar because you are getting old. You can't stop that. So, so just Leave what you can do. I don't cry over split milk. Enjoy you. Marriage is not a certificate of making heaven. 
Listen to this. Eternity is eternity. Meaning it's years, years, years that your head cannot get. You live old. You spend 90 years. 80, 100. Otter. Baba, enjoy your life. If you are going to wait 30 years to find Mrs. Wright or Mr. Wright, and then you are going to live after that time for 60 years, why won't you use one over three of your life doing something you love doing? I'm tired of people looking morose. Every prayer point is your prayer point. If he does not do it, you better leave it and let God do something else. I tell people, if God gave you a good career, better stick with that career. Get joy in your career. Get joy in the fact that you have money and spend it. Spend it. If they are not, if they are not happy with you, let them die. Somebody say, safe. If you are spending, if you are wearing that kind of clothes, that man will not want to come and ask you out. You don't deserve that kind of a guy if you come to this church. Stop walking like every day angry. Stop walking. Stop feeling that your life is on hold. I'm asking you to stop waiting and start living. When you do this, your outlook change. Your results change. You start meeting people who will love you the way you are and who will want you to be a partner in their life journey. But the way you are morose, you are angry. You think all your friends have left you behind. You don't even want to go to weddings anymore. Because you, she was in secondary school when you finished university. Please don't do that. Don't become a bitter old witch. Be a sweet spirit angel. Some people will ask you, why is she, why is she happy? They will know. That's how to confuse the devil. And then number four. Now we are getting to it now. Now, I'm in a relationship, sweetheart. Man of God, I'm in a relationship. I'm an in love. When I see him, cloud comes. The clouds of love, red they are. You don't understand it until you are in it. My heart just beats faster. My heart pumps blood faster. And actually, I will not lie to you. I get aroused when I see him. Things happen to me. Shit happens. I don't know. I can't explain it. So, sweetheart, just pull a break and listen to me for a few minutes. Hello? All right, listen to me. Number one, take it slow. That's number four. Take it slow. You are in need for the long haul. Therefore, take it slow. Don't compromise the power and grace of time by your haste. Listen to this. When it comes to testing intentions and understanding your partner, time is your greatest asset. Be patient. When it comes to testing intentions and understanding your partner, time is your greatest asset. Therefore, be patient. You, you met yesterday, he asked you out yesterday, you are planning a wedding. What's wrong with you? <laughs> be completely humble and gentle. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Be patient. Second Chronicles 15, 7. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be re rewarded. Listen, you need to just stay there. Be patient. Take it slow. Many people, because of haste, have ruined their destiny. I don't understand when you are dating and you want to have sex. Sex to wash it to my sway. Am I speaking something you understand? You have sex, you'll be tired. But the devil wants to wrap it up in such a way that if you don't have it now, you are dying. Something is wrong somewhere. Babe, something is wrong somewhere, sweetheart. It's time to calm down. Because the Bible says marriage, the bed, is undefiled. Only within the confines of marriage is there blessings in sex. Somebody say, Pastor, you don't get it. We're already in cut sheep. We're dating. Do you know tomorrow? Look at you. Do you know tomorrow? I went to, I met a girl while I was serving, a lady, sweet woman of God. She was dating for 10 years. 10 years. Sweet woman of God. She took us from Uyo to Delta because the brother, the man's junior sister was getting married. So we followed. So they were like family. She entered every room. <laughs> uh, after service, I called her. I said, how are you doing, ma? She said, I'm fine. I said, how is her brother? How is doctor? So the doctor has left. I caught the phone. I didn't know what to say, so I caught the phone. Have you ever been there? 
I just caught the phone. So I called up. I said, what were you saying that time? He said, if, he said he has just found love. After 10 years with that, nothing is written in gold. That brother was a tongue-speaking brother. The sister's tongue-speaking. Nothing is written in gold. Anything can fail. You cannot be sure until you put the ring on it. So why would you let him turn you to a basket before he does that? You know that song? You see the song they sing these days? It's not the songs we had that put brain in our senses. Oh, Mara, Eko, what's the way that we are Ah! <laughs> so when, as a young boy, when you hear that, young girl, sense comes without reading the Bible. But this time, what you people even hear is what is encouraging you to do it. Madness. Madness. You know, some people say, mad, do. You know what we say? God, do. Listen, take it slow. You don't have to do the introduction yet. Don't put her on your social media page yet because you will explain if it does not work. All this Facebook, Snapchat, status, all these things you are doing. Man of God, you will almost ruin yourself. Because they will be asking you questions five years now. Why are you asking me out? That girl come. Even me that looked at my wife and said to her I was in a relationship. When I was telling her later, I said, God said, he said, what about her? Imagine if I put her all over my social media page. I will not be deleting. One by one, you're going to post. 2017, we'll be deleting nonsense. <laughs> Just stop this. If he says you do not love her or him because you are not putting her or him, Tell him you will do it, and you are. In fact, you will do it. You won't post anything of your own. It's only him after you are married. Because a guy put you on Facebook does not mean you should put him. Many guys have three pages on Facebook. I read a story yesterday. A guy on Valentine's Day blocked the girlfriend. Blocked her. The girl was calling. Blocked her. Now went and did a surprise for another side chick. That girl was the real one. Did a surprise for the real one. The one that thought she was, was actually side. <laughs> Blocked the non idiot. <laughs> the word is wicked. <laughs> the girl did a very romantic thing for the girl. The girl now snapped, put it on her status. She is a friend with the other side girl. So the girl saw it from her own status and said, This, this is the reason the number has not been going. And you know what? She had already ordered a Valentine gift of 20k. She just collected it back. Although they can't refund, but kept it in her house. Who we'll lose 20k in here? If I was the one, I would still send it like that. That's goodbye gift. Status. Boys have business, business wasa. Why do you think they are changing to business wasa? You are here. You are in 20. Like I used to embrace change. You are in 1995. That, those boys, those wrong boys, they have entered 2025. They will scam you. All you, is born again, you know. You are just trying to get out. You are trying to dress like them. They will scam you. <laughs> Number five, pray. When love happens, pray. Pray for, seek the will of God concerning that relationship. Don't try to ruin a friendship a destiny connection by wanting to convert it to a marital relationship. I've tried that before and I ruined it. Many guys in church, that's what they do. They are close to a girl now, they will come and ask out. That's your destiny friendship. It's not your relationship. So ask God, what do you want this relationship to be about? Because when you ask her out, your friendship can never be the same anymore. The Bible says, do not be unwise. Understand what the will of God is. <laughs> that translation is not okay. And it do not be unwise. You get on before you understand it. Let me give you another translation. Say, do not be foolish. Understand what the will of God is. You see, you understand that one straight. Because you're asking what is unwise. But foolish, you get it. 5.17 of Ephesians. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. 
Paul said, I pray that you'll be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. As for the knowledge of God's will concerning any relationship you are in, 412 of Colossians, Epaphras, one of them, was praying that they will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. You must learn to stand. Say, God, what is your will? And have me know the will of God. Then you now stand. Okay, this is a relationship. Uh, this is a marital relationship. That's what we are looking at. That's God's will. And then you now stand there. And you live there. Not looking around. Anything in trust. That one is finer than one. This one, that's one. You think your wife will be the finest? You need to learn discipline. You are not a dog. It is not everyone on every force that... Listen to this. I, 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 God said I should tell people this. Listen to this. It's not everyone on every force that wants you in love. The word is a spiritual word. Therefore, you have to pray. Listen to this. Pray to guide your territory. Rua to defend your territory. All divorces are not the resultant effect of emotional, financial, or physical breakdown or mistrust. Some are just workings of demons. Some relationships have been ruined because of demons. Not because eh, there's no money, eh, it's not emotionally balanced. No, it's devil, devil at work. So even when you have a good relationship, instead of putting it on your status, pray. I don't know why people do all they can to impress or at all means those who don't love them. Those guys on your social media page, they don't like you really. I hope you know. That's why you put something on Facebook. It looks like you snap. You snap inside a place in Quarry Hotel. It looks like you are abroad. And then they're asking you, have you moved? They are not asking you so that they are happy. They're asking you, they want to know whether you have left them. It's crap. They want to know whether you are still one of us. Struggling people. Some of you got into a relationship. Your status is, ah, I will die with you. You are such a loving kid. Are you okay? It's time to pray, not time to write. It's time to pray. Not time to talk. It's time to pray. In season, out of season, pray. Oh, Yorubas. He said, what is good needs prayer. What is not good needs prayer. Number six, seek cancel. When love happens, some of you, <laughs> I had God. I know it is God that spoke to me. I asked them, when was the last time? You had God speak to you. You had God speak to you. And I think, I think it was 1995. And I, 2005. So since that time, God has been dumb. Doesn't say anything again. So you are hearing him now. Listen, conf even if it is God, it will be sure and God will want you to confirm it. Test every spirit to know which is of God. If you are sure, you will not be afraid to test it. Because you are sure it's God. Even if 500 people test it, it is the same place it will come down. God's will. See cancer. In the multitude of cancer, the Bible says there is safety. In truth, I understand love has a blinding effect. And that is why you need wise voices in your life. Who can guide you in the matters of love. Some people were blinded by love. But the reality of marriage opened their eyes. The reality of marriage, it will open your eyes. When she talk to her, you know the way you talk to him. Hello, how you day? You know it was not nice that you didn't come and pick me. Say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When you are married, you know it was not nice that you came to pick me. Do you know what I've been doing this morning? Shut up! Reality. Just open. Somebody says, that guy is just so sweet. There's no negativity. I say, run. Say, why? I say, he's faking it. Real people have weaknesses. Real people have weaknesses. Many ladies are keeping their weaknesses. That's why they are doing makeup and makeover. You know, makeup is never makeover. Somebody say, We do makeover here. I say, Yet to worse. Makeup is just put it on. Makeover is that we are just going to turn you around because that's the only thing that I can do for you. <laughs> Next time your friends say, Come for me, makeover. Say, I'm, I'm doing makeup. <laughs> The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Proverbs 12, 15. But a wise man is he who listens to counsel. When you are in love, don't, don't, don't judge by your senses alone. Listen. 
where there is no guidance, no the people fall. But in the abundance of counsel, of scripture says there is safety. Proverbs eleven fourteen. Listen to counsel, and accept discipline. See counsel is the reason sixty eight six of Psalm says he has set the solitary in families. Talk to somebody. I know we are a know it all generation. <laughs> There's nothing you want to say to some people. Because you can speak in tongues does not mean you have spiritual sense. Can I say this again? Because you can speak in tongues does not mean you have spiritual sense. I have seen a lot of morons who speak in tongues for hours and in decision making you will see that they are foolish. So because you speak in tongues more than your pastor does not mean you hear God more than him. I have never come here and say I'm the one that pray most out of all of you. <laughs> but we are still on if you are under the ground like this as in where we are digging ball under the ground like 100 feet under the ground. I'll put some of you on skyscraper. What we see there is higher than what you see on your skyscraper. Even go to Buj, Buj, Arafat. <laughs> Let me continue. Number seven, pursue your God-ordained purpose. Love is not about finding someone you want to share one life with. One life. It's about finding someone you want to live your life with. It's two separate individuals. Beating as one. Can I explain that to you? It's not about just one person. Ah, I found the one I want a lot. So your purpose has gone. It's the man's purpose or the lady's purpose you begin to chase. It's not that he does not have a life now because he's now married. Two separate lives beating as one. God's arithmetic is not man's arithmetic. For you to get one plus one is equal to one by man, you have to delete one one. But by God's standard, one plus one is one. Because that's what God said. A man and a woman comes together, they become one. It doesn't mean that they are alive. One person's life now gets off. And one person's life gets lived. Don't listen to anyone who tells you your purpose is not important because you are a lady. When it concerns the matter of your purpose, become a feminist. Your purpose is important. Jeremiah 1 5. Called Jeremiah from the womb. Isaiah 49 verse 1. While he was yet in the matrix of his mother's womb, he called him by name. Because you are married doesn't mean that the fingerprints you are, would now have is the same with that of your wife or your husband. Therefore, therefore, God's purpose for each life remains. And you both need to stay on course. Tell your neighbor you need to stay on course. Stay on course. Because it's spiritual does not mean it's the best for you. <laughs> ah! My dear, you spiritual, I beg you. Number eight. <laughs> Someone needs to hear that. Number eight. Be honest with your partner and with yourself. That's why I didn't speak it in English. Someone just needs to hear that in Yoruba and the person has had it. Be honest with your partner and with yourself. You first must be honest with yourself. What are your faults? What are your weaknesses? What are my strengths? Know yourself. Do a SWOT analysis on yourself. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my opportunities? You need to do these things. Listen, many people don't do these things. You are lying to yourself. The whole world is telling you, you are like a vent of volcano. Anger tick for you. It's anger. It's a, he said, no, people don't understand me. You are a clown. Everybody don't like you. Why? Why? Is it everybody hates Chris? That's even a movie. That's not real life. I used to say that when five people tells you, when one person tells you you are a horse, then they don't like you. When two persons say you are a horse, then they don't like you. When four persons tell you you are a horse, that's conspiracy in action. But when five, six persons tell you you are a horse, baby, you are a horse, it's time to buy a saddle. Stop defending yourself. 
Be frank and honest. Then be honest with your partner. Tell him or add the truth always. Babe, where are you? I'm at post office. And we know you are at Obomosho. I'm waiting for you. I am 20 minutes away, sweetheart. Like George, you say, I'm 20 minutes away. And so he comes after one hour. Say, what happened? He yeah. <laughs> traffic, traffic, traffic. Why did you put traffic when you say 20 minutes? Or were you going to fly? Be honorable. You know we spoke about honor last week? Be honorable. Honor means honesty, integrity. You have to be honorable. Have you ever had sex? No, I swear. Okay. That one you had, what do you call it? I'm asking you, what do you call it? Masturbation. Review. <laughs> Tell the person the truth. If he will stay, we stay. If he will go, let him go. You know, some guys are funny. Because you have had a very good life and you are clean, you think you, God will give you a clean girl. Mokieta. Have you read the scriptures? Is it Prophet Amos, man of God? Is it Amos? Aya. It's not Amos. Osia. God said, go to Oborod. God said, go to Victoria Island. Go to Allen Avenue. I have prepared a girl there for you. And you know what? He, he took the girl, took her home, washed her clean, but the pig returned. She was always going back. God said, no, you won't leave her. I'm, I'm showing you love. That's how I show Israel love. Go and bring her back. If you are in that pastor's church, will you go to his church? Even you that you are looking at me. Will you come to my church if that happens to me? See, Omo Oboro, the pastor of He married a girl from Oboro. He's the famous one on Instagram. That's one he married. <laughs> God, that's a very complete sense of humor. You read some serious, you'll just be laughing. I imagine myself as prophet. Was, ah. <laughs> I imagine you people as members. I imagine us doing the wedding. <laughs> Somewhere at the post office. <laughs> Obo Road <Gay. laughs> I imagine service next week. <laughs> when they say, let the friends of the wife come out. <laughs> <laughs> and if God has told me that, you know that all those PFM and all those that left on Logba Formony, <laughs> we are all going to Oboro. <laughs> That's what we have. But God has a sense of humor. Listen to this. Your life and your righteousness is viewed in rock before God. He doesn't give you what you deserve. He gives you what he has planned. Some saints will put your life in trouble. Follow God's will. I'm not saying go and look for a prostitute. But some people have actually really made a mistake in their past. And we cannot say we are God's people and not live a life of forgiveness. It's rather that we are doing. Number nine, learn to talk. Pray that I'm not excited because if I'm excited, I will overshoot my time. So I'm trying not to be excited. Learn to talk. Your partner is not a mind reader. Speak, communicate. Listen to this. Talking is the lifeblood of any loving relationship. Talking. Talking. I don't say a lot. Nonsense. Talk. Is the lifeblood of any relationship. If a couple talks, they will talk all, through almost all challenges they face. When communication stops, room is at the door. If he does something you don't like, don't give him attitude. Attitude is not the same thing as talking. If you need her to do something, say it. Don't give her the silent treatment. Our partners are not God. They are also not mind readers. Hey, he should have known. I agree, stupid. I agree, he's dumb. But tell him. Even God again and again reminded Israel of the covenant. And when in conflict, endeavor to talk it through on the inside before you go out to the outside. And then about saying, trust your partner. Trust your partner. Life is easier for those who trust. Life is easier for those who trust. <laughs> ah, mistrust or distrust can 
arm your relationship and even arm your health. IBP. I see young people having IBPs now. IBPs. I see him with that guy. He's, that's what he does. And then break up with him. If you cannot trust him. My dad told us when we were very young. He said, without, he said there cannot be love without trust. If you don't trust him, if you don't trust her, don't do it. Why should you die before your time because of BP? Stop checking his online content. Stop checking, checking our phone. Stop checking mails like you are CIA. If you don't trust him, then don't do it. Any relationship built on lust will be shattered easily. And that's what I'm telling you. Build your relationship on trust. Not on lust. The way she looks. She might be fooling you. All of those things they might not be shaped there in the days of the Kardashians. I'm telling you. All of those things might be the works of padded industries. <laughs> when you trust the person you love, it makes living much easier. No necessary arguments. No overthinking sessions. You just know what to say. You know what to do. Because you know you trust the person. The person trusts you. You can live miles away, but when there is trust, you know that the person is there. Listen to this secret will only arm the relationship and break the trust. Once trust is broken, be ready to say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. Oh, my God. Number 11, seek and encourage openness. That's 11 Kobo advice. 11 Kobo advice. When you are in a relationship and you are still keeping appearances and forming, then you are in a movie. When you are in a relationship and you are still keeping appearances and forming, then you are in a movie. <laughs> you know in movies, ladies sleep with makeup on. In movies. When they wake up like this, the nails are still there. They don't cover their hair when they sleep. When you get married, the first thing they do is to pull that thing. You see the normal hair. Say Jesus. <laughs> Be open. In terms of communication and thinking, always talk things over in person. Never just do it on WhatsApp. Some girl was saying, I just like communicating on WhatsApp. Are you okay? Would you also like sleeping together on WhatsApp? Would you also like living together on WhatsApp? Let's join you together on WhatsApp. Have a WhatsApp marriage. And a WhatsApp relationship. Relationship is open. I bought to I bought. You have to have sit down talks. Do not just air your partner out. Listen to them. That's one thing I had to learn. To listen. I'm still learning. You know, some of us, we, we think we know what she wants to say. So don't let's talk. Let's cut corners. Master, let me just tell you the solution. <laughs> but truth is, you have to learn to listen. During communication, open up everything in your head. If he said something and he ought you, let him know. When you analyze happening in your relationship, be open-minded. When you want to celebrate your anniversary, be open-minded. Be open-minded. When you see him with a girl, be open-minded. Don't come and kill yourself. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, this is okay. Love passionately. When love happens, don't hold back. Love passionately. What is passionate love? Atfit defines passionate love as a state of intense longing for union with another. A state of intense longing for union with another. This type of love tends to be common at the outset of a relationship. People in this state of love is what we call they are in their honeymoon of relationship. <laughs> you can't do no wrong. <laughs> I just love this guy alone. Where have you been all these days? I just love you. And she looks at, he looks at her and says, Oh my God. Oh Lord, you fed me. You fed me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have to love passionately. When you do love, things fall in place. Passionate love is the fire that burns and keeps your relationship going. But when love happens and then you have 
past that season. And you now need to get to the hard work, not the honeymoon of your relationship. Still keep dating each other. Keep falling in love with one another. Keep surprising one another. Keep cooking food oh, for one another. Keep touching the hair of one another. <laughs> Whatever is the mumu button, don't press it. Keep it on your laps. So that you just keep dwelling on it. You just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Why? So that she can keep getting in love and you will never get tired of loving one another. But I have a word of advice for you if you are in a passionate love season. If you know you can't take it anymore, get married or get out. Paul said, it is better to marry than to born. Burning is real. I hope you know. Have you born before? I'm not talking about tongue burning, you know. Reborning. The guy stays in front of you, you know you cannot stand up as a guy. And the girl too. She's lost. And you're both looking at each other like this. Anybody who enters, you know there is no self-control anymore. You have lost your senses. I would advise you, if you are old enough, get married. It's not important you give birth to children now. And you have children. But if not, and you are a student of the university, 200 level, get out. <laughs> get out. You are looking for admission, you are falling in love. Get out. That's a demon at work. Get out. It's not love, it's demon. So when love happens, because when it happens, it does not tell us it's going to happen. When love happens, don't forget the 12 things I said. Do those 12 things and you'll be ready to live life on a whole new horizon. Don't keep burning. Live your life. Tell somebody, live your life. Yeah. I am done waiting. I am done waiting. <laughs> you know that's the song some of us need to start singing. I am done waiting. I'm going to enjoy my life. I am done waiting. I am done. I can't keep myself. Set your life on motion. They will come. Either will come, will come. But it depends how they will meet you. Don't let them meet you with a high BP. Don't let them meet you with depression. Don't let them meet you in pain. Don't let them meet you looking at God. Let them meet you where? <laughs> Tell your neighbor they will meet me where? Stand on your feet.